instalment of Menopause Mondays. So today I've had quite a few people say to me, what's the difference between menopause, menopause, sorry, penimenopause, perimenopause, menopause and postmenopause? Well, I was really surprised to learn this, that menopause, the actual menopause, is literally one day of your life. It's just like, okay, so explain. So perimenopause is the bit that leads up to the menopause. Okay, so um, that can be between five and ten years on average is normal for most people uh, before they actually hit that one day. And the menopause marks the day of a year that a year has passed since your last period. And then everything else after that is postmenopausal. So I am postmenopausal. But I remember it was the perimenopausal days which were by far the most challenging and I think it's the perimenopause when because it's such a vague onset you know you don't suddenly think oh today I've woken up and I'm perimenopausal what will happen is you're likely to have all sorts of different symptoms so we and for me it was hot flushes they were the worst I mean thank goodness I'm single because literally I would go to sleep on one half of the bed and I'd wake up drenched and I'd just change my nightshirt and move over to the other side of the bed and at least then I'd have a dry area to get into and then just strip the bed off in the morning. Literally my washing machine was on its knees during my men uh, perimenopausal years. Um, so I remember chatting to this lecturer, it was just, oh god it was awful, I felt so embarrassed. I was out with my daughter having a look around a potential university for her and, um, hey James, um, I basically could feel this hot flush coming on and literally within seconds I could feel sweat dripping down my front, I could feel sweat, sweat dripping down my back, it was coming off my face and it was just like I can't believe this is happening to me and there was nowhere to go. Since I started with or started with hot flushes I literally changed what I wear. If I was, I mean for you guys I know, for you that have these volcanic eruptions the thought of being stuck in like a sweatshirt that's difficult to get off is one of the worst things you could ever wear. I haven't worn my sweatshirts for donkey's years until, you know, I sort of got more out of the perimenopausal years. Now I live in like cardigans or things that can, can strip off fast. It's lots of layers because I don't know when I'm going to have one. I still have the occasional hot flush and they're horrendous when they happen. And I don't know about you, but I feel really... I feel quite yucky, I feel quite ill before I have one too. And there's various things that I know that set them off, but I'll sort of go into that in a little bit of time. So, you know, perimenopause is that time in a woman's life where literally you just, you don't know what's happening to you. You used to be happy, now you're moody, or one day you're happy, the next day you're just thinking, what the is happening? Your, your sleep's bad, you're getting the hot sweats, um, Oh, your skin might break out. It's it's just such a tumultuous time of your life. And because there is no set definition of when it starts, it's a really hard thing because a lot of people go into the doctors thinking there must be something wrong with them because they're anxious or they're sleeping badly. They're suddenly feeling blue. And actually, it might not be anything to do with depression or anxiety per se. And a lot of doctors will probably prescribe you antidepressants. I know a lot of people that have been given antidepressants and actually you didn't need them. It was a hormonal imbalance that you had. And I'm not, I, I'm, I've done it pretty naturally, totally naturally, but I, that has suited me. And I'm not against HRT. I'm, I'm not for HRT. I'm completely ambivalent about it. If you find that that works for you and it helps you on your journey through these menopausal years, then go with it. Um, I'm just trying to sort of share my story and to also raise a little bit of an issue about the fact that it is a serious issue for a lot of women. Uh, brain fog was another thing that I, I still have, <laughs> but it's not quite as bad as it used to be. But there are steps that you can take, whether you go down the HRT route or the bio-identical route, bio-identical hormone route, um, or you go the complete natural route, there are certain things that you can do to actually make that journey a lot, lot easier and um, just more pleasurable to navigate. At the end of the day, it's something that we're all going to go through. So it's kind of just get on with it. Just got to do it. And I think there is still a lot of taboo, particularly in the workplace. Um, I think, you know, it's just like, oh, 
she's just, she's having a bad day, and we get the mickey taken out of us, or having a bad day, oh, you're, you're pre-menstrual, it's just like, go swivel, if, if a fella had to go through what we have to go through with our hormones, they'd be taking so many days off work, I can guarantee it, so literally, so basically the reason that we have all these, these ups and downs is because when we are perimenopausal, we have got we tend to have more estrogen against progesterone as we get nearer through nearer towards the menopausal year so as as we sort of navigate through the perimenopause what happens is sometimes we will actually have a period but we've not ovulated and when we've not created an egg our we don't need the the amount of progesterone because we don't need to create the lining of the uterus for a potential fetus so our progesterone stays low and our estrogen goes rocketing high well our progesterone is our calming hormone so that that helps to sort of maintain a nice balance and you know we wake up feeling healthier and happier and just more you know content with the world but when estrogen spikes that's when we start to feel anxious and we start to feel fizzy we start to feel irritable it can affect our sleep and it can set off these hot flashes that we get hot flush flushes night sweats etc etc so that's pretty much why our perimenopausal years can be so volatile because it's a constant up and down of the progesterone and the estrogen whereas once we've gone through the menopause it tends to be it's not always the case but we tend to have a lack of estrogen which is when you get the dry drying up and the sort of shriveling up or the lack of hair or the hair loss if you get that um again irritability even though we are uh we're low on estrogen when we get low on estrogen our adrenal glands make up for the lack of estrogen circulating in our bodies and that can make us then feel more stressed and more irritable so um it's it's a real dance of the hormones and um that's why it's such a sort of volatile time of our life is because we're just going through this constant trying to balance things so there are certain things you can do I mean I found certainly with hot flashes which are one of my major problems uh, caffeine can set it off so if you're a ca caffeine addict maybe try decaf um, the thought of decaf I, I don't really like the idea of decaf but if you love your coffee flavor or even tea chino tea chino is a herbal um, tea but it tastes quite like coffee and it's actually it's healthy uh, i get mine off amazon it is a little bit pricey but it's really really nice so you could try tea chino that is t e e i think it's double c i n o but uh, google it or have a look on amazon you can get some that way they have some quite nice blends so that's one way of doing it the healthy option alcohol will set off um hot flashes uh, processed foods do high sugar foods do so you want to be looking to reduce the amount of caffeine reduce your alcohol um, certainly as I've got older I mean we're a family of drinkers I love my wine I love whiskey um, I love a social occasion um, but I can't drink alcohol like I used to do it's you know two and a half glasses and I wake up feeling pretty shabby whereas before you know that was just my warm-up <laughs> crying out loud two and a half glasses <laughs> um, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't that's not really responsible I know but it is true you know we just can't synthesize booze as well as we used to so um uh, there are reports that say if you have one glass of alcohol a day throughout your menopausal years it actually helps i'm not entirely sure how i was quite pleased to read that but for me to, st to just stay on one small glass of alcohol i'd rather just go teetotal so i just have periods when i go completely teetotal and then i get bored of myself and uh, and then i start drinking again so it's for don't follow my don't follow my uh, my pattern um there are various other things that you can do to help yourself throughout these rocky years now there's a lot of conflicting evidence out there from all the professionals about whether you should take hrt whether you should go natural whether you should do bioidentical and they're very vociferous about their studies and their research and you know, when I read one article that is apparently scientifically proven, and then there's another article that's been written and it's scientifically proven, but they completely are at loggerheads with each other. It's just like, well, what the heck do we do then? How do we work it out? But one thing that they all do say is that lifestyle changes 
make the biggest amount of difference to us. So well, thank you for the hearts, whoever's given those to me. Sunny, I think it is. Hey, Sunny. Um, so things like cutting out processed foods, reducing the amount of processed sugar that you're eating, drinking plenty of water, prioritizing sleep. I know sleep can be hard, particularly when your hormones are all up at, you know, at odds, but it might mean that you have to take an afternoon nap. And it's about giving yourself some grace. It's about just appreciating that you're going through this stage of life and you probably have to take it a little bit easier. So cut back on the late nights, cut back on the parties, cut back on the processed foods, cut out or cut back on the alcohol and do things that are going to support you. That also includes exercise. We are not supposed to be sedentary. Um, also, if you've, if you've got excess weight, fat cells hang on to hormones and we want to be allowing our bodies to assimilate the hormones that are <laughs> working their, their way around our bodies and causing the havoc. We certainly don't want to be making their, their, their situation even more difficult because of the fact that our fat cells are hanging on to hormones. So um, one thing also you'll have noticed through the menopause is that fat from your bum is probably the only thing that moves north is it goes up around your middle and you become a little apple on stick legs. And it's because as we, so we're sleeping less, so our body's in stress. We might not be eating correctly, so our body's in nutritional stress. We may not be drinking enough water, so again, our body's in stress. Our hormones are all over the shop and our adrenal glands are trying to support the lack or the imbalance of estrogen in our bodies, so our bodies are in stress. And all that stress, cortisol, makes us hang on to fat around the middle because it stimulates the fight and flight system of the body. So you want to be making your life as simple as possible to navigate these years so that you can help to maintain a slimish waist. Um, obviously dietary, there's so much that you can do so much that we can change and it's just about, about taking small steps in the right direction it's not about calorie restriction it's not about deprivation it's just about eating the right things so most of us eat way more carbs than we should do i'm not saying carbs are bad we need carbs for our energy but we tend to eat i mean how many of us have had a bowl of spaghetti bolognese and literally the bowl is overflowing with spaghetti before we even stick the bolognese on it and then if we put cheese on top of that, I mean, it's just like this mountain of stuff. Well, all that pasta is seriously not good for you. The, our daily need for pasta or carbohydrates is tiny in comparison to what most of us eat. And pasta, you know when you pour out the pan and you've got that gluey stuff in the bottom? That's also going in your belly and it's not good. So I would suggest different healthy alternatives Ditch the pasta and have zoodles, zucchini, courgette, so spiralise them, invest in a little spiralizer. I got mine off Amazon, it cost me £12, it was nothing. And all I do is literally I spiralise courgettes or zucchini and I pan fry them in some coconut oil and I have that instead of spaghetti. It's heck of a lot healthier, it's actually tastier um, and it's way better for me. So, and you don't get like gluey stuff or have spaghetti squash. Uh, bake a spaghetti squash in half, roast it in the oven, and then literally use a fork to get all the little bits out, and it makes it look like spaghetti. It's so much healthier for you. Um, and you, again, you don't get all the gluey stuff. I use cauliflower rice instead of traditional rice. Occasionally I eat rice, and if I do buy rice, it's normally the red rice or the black wild rice. Um, but on the whole, I just um, get raw cauliflower florets, whiz them up in a food processor, that makes tiny, it almost looks like um, bulgur wheat, and then I bake that in the oven with some coconut oil for about 20 minutes, and that makes a nice rice, a rice alternative, but it's, again, it's a lot, lot healthier, um, and then I will, I eat that with my curry, so I, I do a lot of slow cooker curries, and um, spices actually can set off hot flushes too, they don't with me, but it's probably because I've eaten a lot of spicy food all my life but they can set off hot flushes too um so yeah it's about making healthier options if you like potatoes try and go for sweet potatoes rather than white potatoes because they're they've got a lower gi value attached to them uh butternut squash that sort of thing um go for foods that have got high fiber and they're going to release the sugars slowly into your bodies some people say 
can we eat fruits? Yes, fruits are incredibly important for our overall health, um, particularly if you can eat a lot of berries. So you want the fruits of the darker colours, ideally, because they have a lower sugar count to them. Um, and also their skins contain so many um, healthful properties. So without going into each one of those in too much detail. Um, but yes, fruits are a great source of all sorts of phytonutrients, antioxidants, fibre and, and sugar too. They have sugar, but it's a natural sugar. So um, don't worry about fruits so much. I'm running a sugar detox group at the moment. And one question I was asked yesterday is, are we allowed to eat fruit? Yes, definitely you're allowed to eat fruit. But you want to be eating probably slightly more vegetables than fruit. And vegetables want to make up the bulk of your food. Uh, obviously, lean protein too, and healthy fats are obviously very important. But it's vegetables that are really going to make up the, the, the largest proportion of your meals. And also, remember that vegetables and fruit are very high in fibre. And we get rid of oestrogen from our bodies through our bowel. So, you, you know, it's really important that you're being regular on the toilet so that you can help get rid of that excess, the excess hormones. And if you're low on oestrogen, you still don't want stuff swimming around your body that isn't good for you. So um, just make sure to keep regular, drink lots of water and eat lots of uh, fresh fruit and uh, vegetables. There are some essential oils that can help. Uh, there is, just off the top of my head, there's clary sage, peppermint, thyme lavender geranium i'm not going to go into those in too much detail now because that will make this a very very long uh, live but i might go into those in more detail in another in an upcoming um igtv about menopause because um they've all got different properties but they can be quite beneficial you can use them in a diffuser you can put some in some bath water you can put a few drops on a tissue next to you i actually mix up um, a variety of oils and then i put a few drops of essential oil in those oils and then i use them after i've had a shower and put some on my on my damp skin um so it makes you smell nice but it all you also get the benefit of the essential oils because they are incredibly powerful so um what else what else what else uh broccoli cruciferous vegetables i know i just mentioned vegetables but they are really really good for our body the 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 various nutrients that they contain uh, cruciferous vegetables are really beneficial so it's just about becoming i think it's about allowing yourself to become informed so that you can advocate for your own health so you know if you're feeling these symptoms if you, you've got anxiety you can't sleep you're getting the hot flushes or flashes irritable you're here there and everywhere before your doctor gives you antidepressants just maybe explore the perimenopausal route because it could well be that that's what you you are and i'm not a doctor so i don't know what tests they'll do but there are certain there are a variety of tests that they can do to measure your hormone levels although again a lot of people say they're so erratic during the perimenopausal years you won't actually get a true reading so i think if you know that you you know suddenly you're suddenly anxious and you're suddenly feeling bad and you know, you've suddenly got these hot flushes and you you don't have a propensity generally for depression, then you may actually not need antidepressants. Make those lifestyle changes. Give yourself some grace. Prioritise sleep. Change your eating habits. Change your drinking habits if you need to. And start to exercise. And just quickly on exercise too. Too much of the wrong type of exercise can also create stress. Generally, when we're going sort of becoming menopausal, what you need is a combination of cardio, high intensity interval training and also strength training to avoid the osteoporosis and that sort of thing and the cardiac, uh, elevated cardiac risk that we get as we get older. So it also makes you feel really good and makes you look better too, if you want to look better. But uh, that's what I use. I, it's healthy living pretty much. Although I do still drink wine normally when I'm not on my sugar detox week. And um, yeah, I work out and I eat reasonably clean. And also on food, never think you should be restricting your calories. No way. Your body will get used to your restriction. And you'll find that eventually when you start to eat normally, because most people do go back to their default, um, you are going to hang on to even more fat. You need to be eating smaller meals. So three normal meals, but two healthy mm. snacks in between. 
and you want your normal meals, particularly the last meal of the day, to probably not be quite so big as, as you might be having at the moment, and make those substitutions. You don't have to do it all the time, but consider them occasionally that I mentioned earlier on in this video. So, um, but don't, do not restrict or deprive, just change what you're eating, change it for the healthier option. Um, you need your metabolism to be firing up. You need your insulin levels to be, your blood sugar levels need to be fairly stable um, so that your body then doesn't start to hang on to fat. So it's a misnomer. Yeah, if you restrict your calories, of course you're going to lose weight. But it's what happens when you start eating normally again. It's, as long as it's sustainable, that's fine. And as long as you know you can sustain that, that's great. But if you're doing something which you're just thinking... I'll just get down to a certain weight and then I'll, you know, I'll just start to eat normally again. That's when the weight comes back on and you probably get a bit more weight added on than you did have before you actually started the restriction in the first place. That's why it's so, you know, yo. people who diet tend to do this, they yo-yo. So they'll, they'll diet, they'll stop their diet, their, their weight goes up, they diet again, they stop their diet, their weight goes even further up. And it's because of our metabolism, our body gets used to it. And our bodies need food. Food is fuel, but use it as fuel, not as a reward system, not as a comfort, not as a blanket, and eat the right foods. And that way you will you'll mitigate the worst of the menopause. So anyhow, guys, if you've got any any subjects you want me to cover specifically regarding the menopause, leave me a comment or send me a message. I'm going to be adding this to my YouTube, it'll go onto my Facebook, it'll go onto my IGTV. So um, however you best want to contact me, um, leave me comments and then I can look into that and address those as we go on into future episodes. So thank you for joining me and um, I hope it was helpful. If anything was unclear, then you know if my brain fog got the better of me, which it sometimes does, um, and I started saying something and then went off on a tangent, which I'm very good at doing, um, get in touch and I'll make sure I clarify that for you. But hopefully, hopefully it was all right and I will catch you soon.